Hi guys, Tory MP Paul Bristow was interviewed on Sky News about a claim that 80 male asylum seekers were being placed in a luxury hotel. Now, as we know, asylum centres cannot hold certain individuals more than 24 hours, so they instead have them relocated. But as there's no other place to send them, the asylum seekers end up in hotels. The Home Office is in disarray. They don't want to invest in the necessary resources to process people, they don't want to build bigger facilities, and they know they just can't turn people away. So they've started accommodating some asylum seekers in hotels. Now certain Tories have been complaining about this, but there's a question that goes unanswered. Have a listen to what Paul had to say. Um, so let's set out the story then. You're claiming that 80 men have been placed in a city centre hotel in your constituency. These men are seeking asylum, one would think. Where should they be staying? Well, let, let me give you a little bit of context. This is just not any old hotel. This is considered to be one of the flagship hotels of our city. It's a smart hotel, often used for weddings and, and dinners and private functions of that sort. And it's got marble floors, it's en suite. It's regarded as almost luxury by so many people in our city. It's all Wait a minute. It's regarded as almost luxury because it has marble floors and it has en suite bathrooms. It's regarded as almost luxury. So... Is it a luxury hotel or is it not a luxury hotel? Because generally there is a standard. There's, you know, it, it's not something very subjective. It's quite objective if something is um, luxury or not. Because you can judge it by the number of stars. Like, is it a five-star hotel? Now, we don't know the name of this hotel, also for security reasons. Um, but... It would be nice to know the name of the hotel so we could find out if, if it is a luxury hotel. But he's sort of given the, ge the game away here by saying that some people claim that it's luxury or it's almost luxury. Obviously, it's not luxury. Just be honest. Also, the first thing you see as you come out of Peterborough Station, it really is. Sorry, just one other thing. He said it's used for weddings and dinners and business meetings. Well, most hotels, you know, if they're a reasonable size, are used for weddings, uh, dinners and meetings. The wrong hotel in the wrong location at the wrong time to be used for this sort of purposes. Look, there's two things that I think we need to do to solve this problem. Of course, we need to stop it at the source in the English Channel. We need to make sure that uh, people who are coming here uh, are, well, are basically not coming here in the way that they are. Um, and of course, when they do arrive here, they need to be in appropriate accommodation. There is absolutely no way that anyone who comes to Peterborough to look at that hotel will consider that to be an appropriate location. Well, it I really wish. Now, unfortunately, the journalist here didn't ask the simple question. Why are people going to hotels? Why are they being accommodated in these buildings? Well, the simple answer is because the Home Office aren't able to uh, hold them in these in the asylum facilities because it's either breaking the law or they don't have enough space for them. Breaking the law as in they're not allowed to hold people for more than 24 hours, certain individuals, or that it's actually breaking the law because these facilities are not up to scratch. That's why they're being sent to hotels. Interesting you should say that because conditions are in the Kent facility, the um, Manston facility in Kent, were said to be pretty rough. You know, we were hearing stories of scabies, a, a diphtheria, potentially down to overcrowding. I mean, isn't that a greater risk to the public? And isn't that what politicians should be talking about rather than where people stay in hotels? Look, at the end of the day, these people are individuals. I totally understand that. And of course, we don't want them to be facing some sort of public health um, problems in, in, in where they were. I think alternative sites need to be set up for them. It can't be smart hotels in city centre locations. It's but this is whose fault? Who is responsible for this? Who has not invested in dealing with asylum, asylum claims over the last 12 years? Who hasn't built the, the proper facilities? The, the hotels are a stopgap. The hotels are because you have nowhere else to put them. And why do you have nowhere else to put them? Because of your government's political decisions, your policies. 
You can't blame the asylum seekers, you can't blame the hotels, you can't blame anyone but yourself. But notice here, he's not saying, well, it's actually our fault, we should have actually invested, but we didn't. It's just not appropriate. Look, people are not coming here, one would imagine, taking that very dangerous journey in very flimsy dinghies, as we're seeing right now, to stay in a hotel. And shouldn't the question no. be a, a, a wider issue rather than talking about hotels here? No, no, well, look, look, I'm the MP for Peterborough. I'm telling you what's happening in, in, in my city. It mm. is a completely inappropriate place. Peterborough has had a fab track record of welcoming asylum seekers, newcomers into our city. We already are servicing way above the national average. You know, vulnerable families, people who need our support. That is absolutely the right thing to do. What we're seeing now is something very different indeed with the arrival of small boats, mainly single men from countries which are considered safe. That is something very, very different from the traditional asylum seeker model. But about 70% of these young men, they're, when they claim asylum, they're successful. So you're, you're arguing against something that doesn't exist. You're trying to portray these people as as uh, making some sort of false claim, but the Home Office is convinced that they are asylum seekers. Like This definition of, well, if it's a young man, then he has no reason to claim asylum. It's a ridiculous argument. You don't know that individual's position, and that's why the Home Office processes each individual case. They don't take a whole batch and say, okay, these people can stay and these people can't. They go through case by case. Now, problem is your government doesn't want to invest the money in processing claims, in speeding it up. Because if you could, just think about it for a moment. Even if you're a racist and a bigot, can you imagine if the government decided we're going to invest a huge amount of money in this, we're going to throw whatever resources necessary at this, we're going to speed up the processing. People who have no claim would be deported. People who have a legitimate claim would move on to refugee status and eventually, if you wanted, you could change the rules and you could allow them to work. And they want to work. They want to rebuild their lives in Britain. They want to contribute to society. They want to work in the fields or work in uh, supermarkets or work in warehouses. They want to work in hospitality. They want to contribute to society. And there's a shortage of workers. I'm not saying that you, you have to force people who are asylum seekers or refugees into work. Give them at least the option. Because the vast majority, you know, if they don't have some sort of traumas, or if they've over, been able to overcome those traumas, they want to contribute to society. Two questions here. Why are they being sent to hotels? That should be the question that the journalists are asking. Why are they going to hotels? Why are they not staying in the facilities? Push, push back on these politicians because what the politicians are trying to do is, oh, look, we're sending these people to these luxury hotels and British people are struggling during a cost of living crisis and trying to change the narrative into who is the enemy here? It's the asylum seekers. That's what they're trying to create in the minds of people, to, uh, to be bitter, bitter about these people who, who have arrived. These people are not arriving to go into hotels. Now, there are people who are arriving to work in the black economy, that's for sure. They're making asylum claims. If those claims have been rejected, then they should be deported. That's normal, but that's not what's happening here. People are arriving, they're making a claim, their claim is successful in most cases, then they go into refugee status. And the government has a duty of care for those people. Because Britain is a civilised country. I know some people want to make it uncivilised. But it's not like that yet. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.